Hi, I am Dr. Nikum. You are watching Supraventricular Tachycardia Part 2. Here is an electrocardiogram with a ventricular rate of 160 per minute. What is your diagnosis? The most significant finding in this electrocardiogram is the varying RR interval, which is the hallmark of atrial fibrillation. Number two, we do not see definite P waves in V1, which is uh, probably the most important lead to look for atrial activity. We do not see regular P waves preceding each QRS complex, either in V1 or lead 1. So we are looking at an irregularly irregular rhythm with no evidence of a definite P waves uh, and this is diagnostic of uh, atrial fibrillation. Here is another example of uh, atrial fibrillation. Some of the things that are different in this electrocardiogram are we do see some P waves here but the rate is almost uh, 350 or greater. In addition, we have the P, this almost uh, irregular baseline noted in other leads. Uh, again, this electrocardiogram also reveals uh, varying RR interval, which I mentioned is very, very diagnostic of atrial fibrillation. Now, this electrocardiogram reveals a ventricular rate for 180 per minute. It is hard to see any P waves in this electrocardiogram. From the previous uh, presentation, we learned that anytime when the atrial rate is between 160 and 240, it represents paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. Since this rate is 180 per minute, the most likely diagnosis here is paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. Could this be paroxysmal atrial flutter with 2 to 1 conduction? It is unlikely. If this is atrial flutter with 2 to 1 conduction, then the atrial rate will have to be 360, but any atrial rate above 350 is considered atrial fibrillation, so this is not a case of a atrial flutter. This is also not a case for atrial fibrillation because the RR intervals are pretty regular and constant and uh, that is against atrial fibrillation. Is this a junctional tachycardia? The rate is very fast for a junctional tachycardia, so the only diagnosis left here would be paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. Treatment with uh, adenosine or uh, carotid sinus pressure may reveal the atrial uh, beats. Uh, here's a rhythm with a rate of 85. However, we have wide QRS complex. If you look at the morphology of the wide QRS complex, there's a wide QRS complex in lead 1 and V5 and V6. So this is suggestive of left bundle branch block. In addition to that, we also have constant P waves seen in lead V1 and lead 2. So this is uh, a, not an accelerated uh, ventricular rhythm or a slow ventricular tachycardia. What we are looking here is a sinus rhythm with an underlying left bundle branch block. This is not a case of uh, WPW because the PR interval is almost uh, 0.2 two seconds. What is your diagnosis here? The first thing that should stick out must be the delta wave which is seen in multiple leads in lead 1, AVL, V5 to V6 and also see short PR interval and a delta wave and this is a case of a WPW with a wide QRS complex, short PR interval and tachycardia in the presence of WPW or the Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Here is another example of a tachycardia at a rate of 125 per minute. Clearly we can see the P waves uh, especially in the lateral chest leads which are delineated and there is a P wave preceding each QRS complex. The RR intervals are constant. The PR intervals are constant. The rate is 125 per minute which falls under the sinus tachycardia category. There is also a, an RSR prime feature in the anterior chest leads which suggests an incomplete right bundle branch block. Now we have an electrocardiogram with a narrow supraventricular tachycardia with a 
ventricular rate of almost 250. It is almost in the border zone of uh, atrial flutter with one-to-one -one conduction uh, or paroxysmal atrial tachycardia with one-to-one -one conduction. The paroxysmal atrial tachycardia, the atrial rate ranges from 160 to 240. So this is 250. Most likely this is atrial flutter with one-to-one -one conduction. In addition to that, we see significant ST depression of 2 to 3 millimeters, horizontal ST depression of 2 to 3 millimeters in multiple leads, including inferior and the lateral chest leads. And the ST depression may be related to the rate itself as the ventricular rate increases, the diastolic filling time decreases, and this leads to reduce coronary perfusion. Even in the presence of normal coronary arteries, sometimes we may see these ischemic changes which are purely related to the reduced diastolic filling time during which the coronaries actually fill. This is an interesting electrocardiogram. Let's see if we can figure out what type of a supraventricular arrhythmia this represents. This electrocardiogram reveals varying RR interval. At the first glance, you may think this represents atrial fibrillation. Varying RR interval, narrow QRS complex, no clearly visible P waves, atrial fibrillation. But when you look closer, you do see definite P waves occurring in a regular pattern. That excludes atrial fibrillation. Number two, if you, can, if you measure the atrial rate, the atrial rate is almost 300. And let me explain why. You see an atrial beat here and next to the QRS complex is a notch which shows a hidden P wave. So you have two P waves for each QRS complex. What we are dealing here is an atrial flutter with two to one conduction. And here also you can see this flutter waves one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. Some of the flutter waves are buried and here you have a suggestion but uh, it is not clear cut. Sometimes atrial flutter waves may be hidden or they may be small in amplitude which may mislead us to think that the rhythm is atrial fibrillation. Paying attention to the morphology of the P waves, their regularity and any hidden nature will uncover the diagnosis which in this case is atrial flutter with two to one conduction with a ventricular response of 150 beats per minute. Here's another example of a narrow QRS rapid trachycardia with a ventricular rate of 214 beats per minute. When you see the RR intervals are regular, the QRS complex is narrow, then one, it is not sinus tachycardia because the sinus rate is usually below 160. The other two conditions that are left for consideration would be PAT or paroxysmal atrial tachycardia with one to one conduction or atrial flutter with two to one conduction. But since the ventricular rate is 214, the atrial rate has to be more than 400. So it is unlikely to be atrial flutter. So we are left with only one diagnosis. This is paroxysmal atrial tachycardia with one to one conduction at a rate of 214 per minute. Again, when the ventricular rate goes goes beyond 160 or so uh, or even 140, it is not uncommon to see these STT changes as suggestive of ischemia. That doesn't necessarily mean that the patient has significant coronary artery disease. It simply means the heart is not getting enough oxygen because of reduced ventricular filling time. What is your diagnosis? This electrocardiogram is very similar to the one we just saw a few minutes ago, but uh, it has a different diagnosis. You can pause here write down your diagnosis and then proceed with the presentation. Now an important thing that we need to pay attention in this electrocardiogram is the telltale sign of changing RR interval. The moment you see a changing RR interval the second most important point you want to ascertain is the, the atrial activity. When you are looking for the atrial activity you look at V1 and you see the atrial activity is very fine, it is chaotic, there is no regular rhythm, there is no regular intervals. Uh, as a result, this is an electrocardiogram representing atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response with minor STT changes probably related to tachycardia. See, this is how you try to extract the diagnosis by first looking at and see if there's an obvious 
finding that tells what the diagnosis is or by a process of elimination when in, when you are in doubt you look at the rate you look at the rhythm you look at the p to qrs relationship you look at the r or interval and then try to deduct what is the most likely diagnosis that you are dealing with in a given particular tracing here's another example of a varying r or interval no definite p waves visible in any one of the leads this is an example of a atrial fibrillation but in addition to atrial fibrillation we see something very important in this electrocardiogram that is an r s r prime or a right bundle branch block pattern and uh, that is an important finding because this is an electrocardiogram with a atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response with the presence of uh, r s r prime in v1 and slurred s waves in multiple leads uh, so along with that there are stt changes uh, which may suggest ischemia or maybe non specific t wave changes so this electrocardiogram in a sense reveals uh, atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response and right bundle branch block with non specific stt changes here is an example of uh, atrial flutter i guess you guessed it right the sawtooth appearance of the atrial activity is the hallmark of atrial flutter the rr intervals appear to be fairly constant at a rate of 150 per minute so the atrial rate is approximately 300 beats per minute and both of these fall in the criteria for atrial flutter so we have a atrial flutter with 2 to 1 conduction surprisingly we don't see much stt changes as we saw in other leads where the ventricular rate was close to 150 here's an example of an atrial fibrillation i'm showing you many tracings related to atrial fibrillation because atrial fibrillation can manifest itself in many different forms but the key here is to remember that there is a varying rr interval if you see an atrial fibrillation and a constant rr interval with a slow ventricular response then you may be dealing with a junctional rhythm on top of a atrial fibrillation but however this doesn't appear to be a junctional rhythm because the rr intervals are varying in the presence of very fine atrial fibrillatory waves here's another example of a atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response almost close to 140 to 150 per minute with an incomplete right bundle branch block and non specific t wave changes here's an example with a regular tachycardia at a rate of 135 per minute again we see regular p waves here before each qr is complex the pr intervals are constant the rr intervals are constant and this is an example of a sinus tachycardia now we have a wide qrs rhythm here and the interesting thing is uh, we need to look for clues to see whether this represents uh, a ventricular tachycardia at a rate of 100 per minute or is this supraventricular tachycardia with an underlying bundle branch block we have identified the, the wide qrs complex which represents maybe incomplete left bundle branch block the next thing we want to see is look for the atrial activity and we want this clear evidence for atrial activity which is constant so each qrs is preceded by a, a p wave the pr intervals are constant so this is a sinus tachycardia with an underlying left bundle branch block also there is evidence of left axis deviation as seen in lead 2 3 and abf so we have a sinus rhythm with left bundle branch block and left axis deviation i let you make the diagnosis on this case This is slide number 28 and what is your diagnosis an important clue is to look for evidence of a hidden activity what is your diagnosis here slide 30 what is your diagnosis 31 can you guess what the rhythm is 32 this is an example of a multifocal atrial tachycardia it has a varying rr interval but however there is definite p wave and the p wave morphology varies from beat to beat this is most commonly seen in patients with uh, chronic lung disease and multifocal atrial tachycardia is an ectopic type of arrhythmia it is hard to treat we basically have to treat the underlying pulmonary condition which may improve the rhythm and uh, this is an example of a multifocal atrial tachycardia thank you for watching